Cal Jewelry Making Friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri. Welcome to my work table. This is an earring bonanza. <laughs> I have been having so much fun with my Dee Dee's Deluxe Bead Box from May and also I got a deluxe check bundle from her and I'll just show you. I have done so many projects with most of it well actually both things but this bracelet that I did I can link this video below this clasp actually was in the deluxe bead box and pretty much everything else in this bracelet came from the check bundle that is uh, probably I don't know by now maybe sold out but she will create more of these I believe she's working on doing that this was jam-packed and as you can see I have this stunning bracelet and the only thing that I took from my stash were a few seed beads that's it the rest was in that bundle so it's a fabulous and then with the Dee Dee's deluxe bead box I have a video where I did a set this is my beautiful very minimalist chic elegant whoops I have it backwards um, just beautiful little bar necklace with one dangle and I made my own chain using the beads and the spacers from the box and then to go with that I did a pair of earrings I did this beautiful pair of wire wrapped earrings using all the gemstones and the glass from the box and I have t um, gold filled interchangeable lever back earrings and I keep a couple of pairs of these in my jewelry wardrobe and then as I get these beautiful boxes and beads I don't need an ear wire every single time and I can just like make my drops and change them out and I have a tray in my jewelry wardrobe so I don't need an ear wire every time that I get a box or make a new pair of earrings and um, you know I'm putting a high quality metal in my ears as well and I have gifted so many of my friends my sister-in-law my friends in Italy I have gifted so many of my friends gold filled e lever back ear wires they're very easy to take in and out of your ears and a lot of times I'll do the ear wire and make two or three drops for them to interchange and then I add to them over time so if you have girlfriends a book club teachers that you w will have for a few years with your children in school if you have mothers grandmothers um, you know girlfriends anything like that this makes a fabulous gift and so some of my earring bonanza here will definitely go as gifts and you know my friends now know when they get an earring with no ear wire that it's for the lever bags that I've gifted them so this is just a great great gift idea but also for yourself when we make a lot of jewelry as jewelry makers you know we end up with a lot of things in our wardrobe and this just kind of cuts down on needing ear wires so everything here is super easy totally beginner skill level and I thought that I would slow down a little bit and kind of show my method for wire wrapping a loop my method for doing really easy consistent simple loops and um, then if I want to do something a little tricky this is super easy but there's going to be a little trick to this pair and probably the most difficult pair is the ones that I made that coordinate with my bracelet I have one of these check glass crystals and everything else is just left over so I also even the bead stringing wire is my champagne 19 strand bead wire and that was a leftover scrap and so this earring just um, coordinates beautifully with my bracelet it's one of my favorite things to make is bracelet and earring sets um, I live in a hot tropical climate and when it gets really hot sometimes necklaces and you know things like that are just too uncomfortable but you can always wear a bracelet and earrings when it's hot okay so for this earring I'm going to take this little bead and drop it down to the middle of my wire it's like floating it's a little floating bead I love that and then I'm going to take one of these beautiful little spacer beads and for being so small it's amazing that two wires I even on my bracelet got three wires through them it they're really amazing I love these little Stella that is the founder and creator 
of Dee Dee's beads and the deluxe bead box is amazing at sourcing beads. She always finds unique things that I have never seen or don't have in my stash. I applaud her. She did a great thing. So this is where I said this can be a little tricky because now on this earring we need to match the first one and you just have to go slowly and be patient. Um, so what did I do next? Next I did one of these crystals and these are so cool. I don't know if you're able to see that this has the palest blue color to the glass and then that little bit of like this golden wash over it. It's very subtle but such a beautiful check glass bead. And then I'm going to thread on another little disc spacer and this little bead was from the deluxe check bundle that I also received from her this month and it was just amazing and I had a lot of things left over from that as well um, just absolutely amazing and now I'm going to put both strands through that number two crimp tube it is gold filled and it's the same one that I used on my bracelet you see it all throughout my bracelet design and so here's where um, we just have to be a little patient because now I want to make a loop and in fact I'm let me get my my pliers here I just want to make a loop and thread it back down through that crimp tube so this is where I said this pair is just a little bit trickier I got my wire coming down you know I got my loop going back through the crimp tube and all the beads and so now I just have to match both sides so just kind of scooting and gently tugging until I have this earring exactly the same as my other one and there is three wires going through the beads so you know it's a little bit tight I mean they fit but it is a little bit tight and like I said the, I always say that the first earring is so easy because you just make it and the second earring is always the hardest one because then you have to match what you yeah, did looks pretty good on the bottom and now I just have to get my loop to match and that looks really good okay and now I'm going to bring in my magical crimping plier and it turns that number two crimp tube into a little tiny bead I love it I think it's so professional so just fit that tube in the well close the plier when you take it away you made like a ravioli shape and then turn it sideways and fit it in again and close and then you just keep going around and around you can either turn your work or the plier until you don't feel like the plier is doing anything and when you take it away you have this beautiful little bead so now I can just kind of straighten everything and trim away those extra wires I love this kind of floating like magical bead <laughs> look that comes from doing this design and these are also really easy to thread right on to those interchangeable ear wires isn't that pretty that is absolutely gorgeous so actually the most difficult pair is done <laughs> and then on this pair I created <laughs> this little drop this was one of my favorite beads in the deluxe bead box this beaded bead they are not difficult to make but when it is so nice to have them already done and i did decide to cut up apart the little designer bead strand that was in there and kind of harvest the gold and i think these little oh yes these little 
bicone beads, these little check pressed glass bicone beads were also part of the deluxe check bundle. So I did borrow a few little elements, but everything is what I got from Dee Dee's beads this month. And you know, I just loved, I love mixing things up. But um, what I decided is I really want this to be like a little bobble at the bottom of a, of a downward rod or, you know, downward wire. So I kind of picked this spot and I think that this is the half inch mark. So I'll show you what I did so that both earrings will be the same. I just looked at how much space I wanted and yes, I chose half an inch. So I'm going to do the same thing with my other bead, just get it, let me lay it down on my mat so that, so that um, I have too much on my work surface to <laughs> lay this big ruler here. And then I'm just going to take my Sharpie marker and do the same thing, just put a mark at half an inch and now I am going to use my one and a half millimeter one step looper and put that in to this to the looper and I'm going to put the front jaw of that plier right on that black mark. I don't know if you can how well you can see because the tool is black but then I'm just going to let the tool do that nice blunt cut make that loop and I'm just going to pull this down so that I can see that my loop is centered on that. It's going to be like a bar. This I just love the <laughs> sort of this geometry. It's almost, this almost like a pendulum or I don't know. But when I saw those beaded beads, I just thought what a stunning earring. And so in order to get um, the other one exactly alike, I'm going to do the same thing. Just find my little mark, put my head pin, my ball head pin in the jaw of the plier, right where that mark is, gently close it so that I can make sure I have the same spot and close it and close it all the way and before I take it out of the tool I'm just going to pull that head pin down until I can see that my loop is centered and you can always go back with your pliers and make adjustments if you need to but I just thought this was such a cute way to feature that beaded bead just to have it dangling from kind of it's kind of like a version of a stick earring just want to make sure that my my loops are closed look how cute that is oh my goodness i don't think i'll be giving these away this was one of my favorite beads from the box this month oh i love that i love how it dangles and it's just beautiful it's just beautiful I love, this is my probably my favorite pair. <laughs> I love those. So by the way, every single head pin that you see here is from a company that I'm so proud to be affiliated with. It's called Purity Beads, and it is a father and son business, and they do an e-coding on all of their metal findings and chains and beads. And I found them last year at a bead show, and I purchased a lot from them and then I've been on the website a lot this past year and they were at a recent bead show that I went to and I talked to the owner of the company about offering my viewers a discount on their first order and you know becoming an affiliate and I also I'm going to be working with this company and you'll be seeing a lot of their products I'm just using the head pins today but this is like some of the things that I picked up at the show just absolutely amazing beautiful pieces that I don't see anywhere and on top of that they do this e-coating that's anti-tarnish and they do it in-house so it's really amazing so when I grab a head pin for earrings like this that are going to go on a 
uh, gold filled ear wire I don't have to worry about tarnish and I don't have to do my permalac coating at the end of my projects so I just thought I would share that with you and I will put the link below so use my code to get to the website and then type in I mean use my link to get to the website and then type in my code and the father and son will give you a discount on your first order so all of these have been done because instead of simple loops here I did wire wrapped loops and the reason I did wire wrapped loops is so that I could secure beads like this in the facing forward position so like all of these needed to stay facing forward I really didn't want them to spin around because of the nature of the beads so I have done those that way and I my last little wire wrapped earring is this gorgeous flower and this was part of the deluxe check bundle and then these other elements were in Dee Dee's deluxe bead box and I just combined them to make this beautiful little little flower drop and so like I said I wire wrapped these because I want the flowers to be staying to face forward and stay facing forward when they're in my ears so I just saved the last one because it's the exact same thing that I did I just saved the last one to do with you and one of the reasons I also wanted these this way is I don't know if you can see but these were all different like you know each flower had a little different striations in it um, and but since it's earrings I wanted the two to match as well as possible so I picked out this side and I just thought I would go really slowly and show you all how I do a wire wrapped loop because I know there's a lot of really new people to jewelry making so I'm gonna do this really slowly and um, the person I learned from had this little metaphor that she that she told me and for a long time that was what helped me to remember the steps of the loop so I want my loop to be going this way so that the hole is you know the same direction as my flower so um, if, when I hold it this way it is perpendicular to my mat and I'm going to you know grab my the head pin right where it's coming out of the bead so this space right here this little tiny width on my I'm sorry this little tiny width on my plier that is the space that the wraps will go around so that's how I'm getting a hold of it to start with and then I'm gonna push the wire forward a 90 degree bend and then I remove this plier and then pick up my round nose pliers and you know round nose pliers are cone shaped and so the the tip of the wire is going to give you the tiniest possible loop and the further you go down on your plier the larger loop you will have so if you want to you can take a sharpie marker and if you know put a mark if you're going to make a lot of elements and you want the loops to be the same then you know always to place your place your plier on that mark I used to do that I don't do it anymore because you know I kind of know where I where I place mine I'm always right about there and um, don't worry about this so much right now because when we wrap we can like make a little adjustment to keep it facing forward but I just grab a hold of it just like that in the same place that I did for my other loops and now I'm going to bring this wire back to the front wrapping it nicely over the plier so I have just made this little loop and now I need to rotate that so that this is out of my way and when you look at it this way we just made like the lady's head and so now this is her scarf and her scarf needs to wrap around her neck so now her her little scarf is going to go around her head and now it's we've started with the scarf but if you can see my loop is lopsided and I don't want that so I'm just going to roll the whole loop while I'm gripping the pliers really well and just roll it forward like that so that again that loop is centered on the wire you can do a little bit of adjusting after you're done but it's best to do it now now I can remove the plier and now I have the lady's head and her the start of her scarf so I'm gonna grab her by the head let me make sure my flower is on the side I want it to be on there that side 
Now I'm gonna grab her head and start wrapping her scarf around her neck. So if you're brand new and you're a visual learner, this might help you. Now at this point, depending on how long your wire is and the gauge, you may be okay to wrap with your fingers. I tend to do it with my pliers. I feel like I have better control, but after you've done some, you will know which way you prefer. And there's going to be times when you do one, one way and one another way. And so I'm just continuing to wrap all the way down to my bead, filling in that space. And for me, I always try to bring my wire around to the back if possible and make my cut around the back. Now, when I take that away, I have a perfect loop and now I am going to trim the excess wire as close as I can. I keep a really sharp pair of cutters that I don't cut chunky, thick things with. Um, I have a separate pair for that. And now I have that little cut in, so I'm gonna come in really gently with, you can use your bent chain nose pliers or your, your, um, your regular chain nose pliers and just careful not to crush your bead because you can break your beads at this point. I'm just grabbing gently and I just wanna tuck, just wanna tuck that cut in so you don't really see it. One little adjustment there. Okay, and now my flower is really stable and when these are on the ear wire, they will always be facing forward. They'll dangle but stay facing forward. So that is the way that I did that little pair. And then my last pair is super fun. <laughs> this is a really simple, I love the geometry of cube beads. And I thought this was so fun to have a geometric dangling earring cubes into a sphere, into a square that's on its diamond, and then with a circle inside. I just thought this was like a metaphorical geometry lesson. <laughs> I just love it. I know I'm silly, but I have had so much fun playing with the beads in this box. And before we make the other one, I'll just show you how cute this is. This is just fun and flirty, and I see this like on a really hot day with wide leg linen pants. That's my uniform when it starts to get hot. And you know, just a white tank top and basically nothing else, maybe a bracelet, but basically just fun, flirty, swingy earrings. I just totally love that. And so we got two in the box for May. There were two different um, shapes to these drops and they have like a little, um, a little rhinestone in them this was the other shape but since I was doing the geometric thing I didn't choose the teardrop I chose the square but you could also end a design like this with another bead or simply you know use another ball head pin and end it with the ball so you know whatever you like but isn't that the cutest thing so let me show you how I did that again it's just simple loops with the one step looper and I've already and connecting so I just have a teeny tiny little scrap of 20 gauge wire here and I used my one and a half millimeter one step looper on all of these other simple loops that I did. That's all that is needed to go onto the interchangeable ear wire. But I am going to switch to the two and a quarter um, one step looper before this bead that's going to get connected to the squares and to this drop because there was a thickness to this little drop here and the one and a half millimeter was too tight. It didn't swing freely. So we need a little bit bigger loop for a component like that or a drop like that. So I'm going to start with putting this little wire just past the back jaw of the plier and just gently close it. It makes that tiny little clean cut on the end. It's so little, I just let it drop, but there's almost no waste. It gives you that nice blunt cut so you can skip that step with your pliers and then just pull 
the wire down so that the loop is centered on the wire and when I take the tool away I have a perfect loop and when, since I had components to do I just keep the tool in my hand I just kind of swing it out of the way and thread on my bead and I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side but this time I have to be mindful not to damage my bead. So if my wire was longer, I could push it all the way through the back hole of the tool, but it's not, and that's okay. The tool only needs enough space. You really just have to be past this back jaw so that it can make the cut and make the loop around this little mandrel that's inside the tool. And as long as I have backed my bead away, from the front jaw, just about a millimeter, I won't put any stress on my bead. So now I can just let the tool make that little cut and the loop. And now I pull it down before I close it all the way so that my bead is away from the jaw of the plier. There's no stress on it. And I can also have a look and see if it's centered. So I can already see that this loop is not closed. And I don't know why that happens sometimes with this size one step looper but if uh, it's fine because i have to open and close it anyway so it's really okay i mean that's the reason we do a simple loop so i, I don't know if you can see it's not really closed all the way but that's totally okay i'm going to open it <laughs> and attach this little drop to it and now i can close it all the way and it gives me a chance not only to close it, but I like to open and close my pliers on a loop like that just to work hard in it. And you know, not that an earring gets much stress, but <laughs> anyway, this one's closed really well. And so now I can just connect, connect, connect. This is like instant gratification, it really is. Just open the simple loop and connect it to that little bit larger simple loop just make sure it's closed really well and I'm going to attach it to my other little section that I've already done and it is done so I mean you can sit and make a whole lot of earrings and as I said these interchangeable gold filled ear wires are fabulous they don't tarnish they're a quality metal in your ear and you know as we we can really be generous with making earrings and it's really lovely if you have friends where there's sisters or girlfriends and they share jewelry because everybody's got their own ear wires but they can change around the, your drops that you give them it is such a fabulous way to have an earring wardrobe i just love it so i hope that you all enjoyed this earring bonanza <laughs> this is my favorite pair i am just crazy about this little pair here i love them i also love these i wear smaller earrings most of the time i i actually love all of them i'm trying to tell you what my favorites are but my eye is going from this to this to this so some of these will be gifts and some of these i will keep um, for sure these little these little bobble <laughs> will definitely stay with me i love these i just love these i'll probably wear these tomorrow <laughs> i think that is just the cutest little it looks i don't even know what it looks like it's adorable i love those so anyway i thank you all so much for watching and choosing my video today i will leave links to Dee Dee's deluxe bead box um, and to the website Dee Dee's beads um, this is not a subscription box and it sells out every single month so she makes her announcements on her Facebook group on the 12th of every month and so it'd be great if you're on Facebook to follow her and that way you won't miss the announcements because you you can't subscribe to this box and it's a really um, beautiful she is very talented at finding unusual beads amazing shapes giving you a lot to work with as I said I have so much left over this was a bead that I just didn't get to that was in the box this month it's like a nugget bead I mean I don't know it's called a nugget bead but it was kind of a controlled it's each one is the same pretty much and I just love I mean there were so much in the box that I couldn't really use everything but I'm still working as you see I've got a whole nother a whole nother collection here 
So I thank you for watching. Check the description box for links to Dee Dee's beads and purity beads. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao jewelry making friends.